Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump spoke at the prestigious Detroit Economic Club Monday, where he laid out his economic vision. Trump vowed to slash corporate taxes and end the estate tax. He also said he would reject the Trans-Pacific Partnership and renegotiate trade deals, including NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. Trump's speech was interrupted more than a dozen times by protesters. Without security, there can be no prosperity. Home ownership is at its lowest rate in 51 years. Trump's speech at the Detroit Economic Club, he vowed to push an America first economic plan. Americanism, not globalism, will be our new credo. Our country will reach amazing new heights, maybe heights never attained before. All we have to do is stop relying on the tired voices of the past. We can fix a rigged system by relying on the people who we — and just remember this, it's so important — we are reliant on people that rigged this system in the past. We can't fix it if we're going to rely on those people again. To talk more about Donald Trump's speech, we are joined by two guests. Jackie Maxwell is a crane operator and a, m a member of the United Auto Workers. She interrupted his speech at the Detroit Economic Club Monday. And Matt Taibbi is an award-winning journalist with Rolling Stone magazine. He's been closely following the Trump campaign. One of his recent pieces headlined a Republican Workers' Party. Matt Taibbi is also the author of several best-selling books, including The Divide, American Injustice in the Age of the Wealth Cap. Let's go to Jackie <clears throat> first, Jackie Maxwell, in Detroit. Why did you interrupt the speech? How did you get in, and what were you shouting? Uh, good morning. I um, received a ticket from a friend of a friend. I was asked to participate with the Michigan People's Campaign. Um, my question that I asked of, uh, of Trump in the speech, when I interrupted his speech, was how did he feel it was winning for Michigan automotive workers to cut our pay and to threaten to move our jobs uh, elsewhere in the country where people would work for less pay? and we would be begging for our jobs back. How does his proposals suggest that that would happen, Jackie? Uh, approximately, like, almost a year ago to the date, actually, to this week, he made those statements that uh, U.S. auto workers, we make too much money, we're overpaid, that maybe we should move to those auto jobs, automotive jobs in Michigan. Uh, where people would be more appreciative of lower wages, they'd work for less, and then the Michigan automotive workers would be begging to have their jobs back. Actually, <clears throat> it was an interview in the Detroit News a year ago, so to quote him exactly, Donald Trump advocating for lowering Michigan auto workers' pay by moving factories outside the state, as you said, he said, you can go to different parts of the United States, and then ultimately you do full circle. You'll come back to Michigan because those guys are going to want their jobs back, even if it's less, after Michigan loses a couple of plants. All of a sudden, you'll make good deals in your own area, unquote. Jackie Maxwell. Yes, that's exactly what I'm referring to. So, um, how did you get into the club, and what was Donald Trump's response? Uh, we received tickets uh, via email from um, a friend of a friend. I did not know the person that sent the tickets. They arrived in my email. How many of you protested? There are approximately 17 of us inside. Mm. And was anyone arrested? No, we were not arrested. Um, Secret Service escorted us out. They were firm, uh, but were not uh, ab abusive in any way. And once we were outside of the ballroom, DPD took over, and they, uh, there was a gentleman that just took our name, 
off of our identification, and that was it. DPD just walked us to the door politely outside of Cobo Hall. Mm -hmm. um, Jackie, can you describe your job as a crane operator and talk about the jobs in Detroit? How many have been lost? Uh, there are many jobs that are lost uh, when the automotive industry went through its transition. The the numbers in the UAW membership did fall. A lot of that is due to plant closing. A lot of that is due to things becoming more uh, automate automation, um, automotive industry downsizing somewhat. I am a crane operator. I operate a steel crane. Uh, it's about 90 feet in the air. I haul, on average, 40 to 50,000 pound coils of steel. Um, that are used not only in the automotive industry, but in other manufacturing sectors. So, overall, what is your message to Donald Trump? I want—I would like uh, Mr. Trump to address that, that statement that he made, and how does he think that that is a win for the Michigan automotive industry, for Michiganders as a whole? The automotive industry is a backbone of, of Michigan and the Midwest. It, it is our economy here. Without the automotive industry, Michigan would be an economic disaster, whether it's the, the independent uh, part supplier, privately owned part supplier to the, the big part suppliers. It's just a tremendous amount of our economic base here in Michigan. And do you think that Hillary Clinton has a better message? Um, what about also third parties, and who are you supporting? Uh, I'm going to vote with my conscience. Um, I, as a rule, I never tell anybody who to vote for. I say you look at the candidate, whether it's Democratic or Republican, and you look at how they can benefit your household, um, your family's needs, and you vote with your conscience. You make an educated vote, um, as long as you vote. Uh, that that's the key. And I would like to um, I like to hear Hillary's stance on bringing jobs to Michigan, uh, jobs, especially in areas like the metropolitan Detroit area, what she plans to do. I'd like to hear her position on um, foreign trade. And, you know, then I can make my decision. Well